Welcome to That's Good Sports. I'm Brandon. If you don't think Chris Collinsworth wants to make love to Patrick Mahomes for days on days on day's end. I love watching this kid play. Just gonna roll the right, escape pressure. How in the world was he even looking back in there? MVP type throws. I mean, you just simply have to say it. And yeah, he threw a strike on that one. Probably the most athletic of quarterbacks back there in the backfield. I mean, he's just sophisticated with what he does too. When he takes off the run, look at his eyes. He's downfield, he's gonna look, but he knew exactly where he was gonna go the whole time. Brilliant young player, he really is. When Mahomes starts rolling out, you just kind to hold your breath you know something's about to happen and sometimes he won't look when he throws it we've seen that earlier this season as well and it looks like his shoulder can come out of the socket to make some of the throws he's made you're wrong perna if you asked collinsworth to play mary fuck kill let's say tom brady aaron Rodgers, and patrick mahomes he'd say well i'd kill aaron Rodgers, and i would kill tom brady so i could marry and fuck patrick mahomes for the rest of my life and you'd be like, that's not how the game is played, Chris. And he'd be like, that's how I play it. That's how I play it. And don't get me wrong, Mahomes is, he's playing amazing, but Collinsworth found a way to give him credit for this Daryl Williams touchdown run. And watch who it is that pushes him over the goal line. Mahomes gonna jump in there and give him <laughs> a little push. Maybe as it should be, who was it that got the Kansas City Chiefs over the goal line and over the curse of Christmas pass with some of these playoff losses? Patrick Mahomes, and there he is. That's beautiful. But with Mahomes, he does it all. He does it all. <laughs> and the best part about him is the new face of the National Football League, and I think there's no question that he is. That is a good face. That is a fine young man. His teammates love him. His coaches love him. And I, Chris Collinsworth, declare my love for him. I love Patrick Mahomes. So pretty. Collinsworth made it sound like Patrick Mahomes cured rectal cancer. Speaking of bleeding assholes, today I'll recap the Patriots defeating the Chargers and Chiefs Colts. That's good sports. playoffs so you know subscribe to this youtube channel also a word from my official sponsor manscape.com get those pubes nice and fresh i'm manscaping expert and legend brandon perna and i've been growing body gardens for about 20 years now and what i've learned is if you want the tree to look bigger you need to keep the bushes trimmed to do that having the right tools is a necessity and that's why I ditched these dangerous shears long ago and ordered my products from manscaped.com with the promo code SPORT20. That's a weird sound to make in a forest. Manscaping should be easy and convenient. And with the lawn mower, which is waterproof for easy cleaning, you can keep things smooth, avoiding turning your tree into a prickly cactus. And even if you don't need your tree to look bigger, whoever you are, Keeping a well-kept yard is the manly thing to do. It's also probably mandated by your HOA. So use my promo code SPORT20 and you'll get $20 off your first order at manscaped.com. I'm a man. A Captain Luck may have lost the battle, but the war may be fruitful as their consolation prize is just $122 million in cap space this offseason. The Colts have enough cap space to pay every single player that revolts against the Steelers. That's the upside for Colts fans. I'm trying to make you feel better. One hour before the Colts Chiefs game, I already knew, I already knew the Colts were gonna lose when I saw Quentin Nelson wearing a crop top in the snow. You go outside in the cold, scantily dressed like that, you're just asking to be taken advantage of. Now each team was without their best safety, no hooker for the Colts, no berry for the Chiefs. And you know what they say, no point in soliciting a hooker if you ain't got any berries. The Chiefs scored first and they scored easy. Again, a huge surprise without a Colts hooker in the back end. Uh, the Chiefs secondary had been a liability all season but I commend their defensive strategy for this game. Bat down every single Andrew Luck pass and our terrible secondary won't be an issue. Was the Chiefs defense really that bad all year or was their offense so good that the defense just decided to rest until the playoffs started? 
I don't know what's more impressive, the way the Kansas City defense played, or that the offense scored 31 points and Patrick Mahomes threw zero touchdowns. Mahomes rushed for a touchdown, Tyreek Hill had an impressive reverse go for a touchdown, and each of the Williams backs rushed for a touchdown. And every time Mahomes needed to play downfield, Travis Kelsey seemed to be open. Honestly, Mahomes' stats would have been a lot more impressive if his wide receivers didn't drop so many goddamn balls early in the game. After the game, Tyreek Hill said, I shook off the drops early, and I just started pretending the football was somebody's neck. You'd think I would know by now that I would remember to imagine footballs are made out of human flesh instead of pigskin, but I still forget. Patrick Mahomes, yes, he can throw the ball through a mouse's asshole while on fire and blindfolded, but he got the Colts to jump off sides four times in the first 20 minutes of the game. That's impressive for any quarterback, but a first year player in his first playoff game? Insane. And if you thought barbecue was the most likely thing to give Chiefs fans a heart attack this year, you're wrong. It's the sight of seeing Patrick Mahomes with a knee injury in a playoff game. He was fine, but you know when you see a joke so good, you just, you have to share it? Well, that's what happened when I saw PFT commenter tweet this with the Mahomes injury. Not the first Chief that would have a problem with wounded knee. That's why he makes the big bucks and why I beg for money on Patreon. Now, Indianapolis finally made a play on special teams, blocking this punt and scoring their first touchdown of the game. The only people not excited about that Colts punt block was every single player on the Colts defense who had to immediately go back out on the field where they had already spent 95% of the game. With two to three minutes left in the first half, Andrew Luck had 15 passing yards to the Chiefs' 17 first downs. That stat was shocking as was people on Twitter thinking fans throwing snowballs onto the field is anything other than hilarious. But nothing was as shocking as hearing Patrick Mahomes' commands at the line of scrimmage. Helen Keller! Did he say Helen Keller? Helen Keller! Patrick Mahomes makes one no-look pass and he thinks he can yell Helen Keller at the line of scrimmage? How arrogant. Remember when Jared Goff yelled Halle Berry at the line of scrimmage? Up to a really next level. Helen Keller! Patrick. How are you going to impress Helen Keller if she can't hear you? Not because she was deaf, but because she's dead. Kansas City was up 24 to seven before halftime, and then the worst thing that could happen happened to the Colts. No, Ryan Grigson didn't come back and trade for Trent Richardson again. After Andrew Luck impressively drove Indy down the field for the first time all game, Adam Vinatieri missed a chip shot field goal right before halftime. After seeing Adam Vinatieri go on to miss two kicks in this postseason game, I think we need to credit Bill Belichick for sticking to his personnel philosophy. It's better to get rid of a player 12 years early than a year too late. Smart move, Belichick. Always thinking ahead. Indy came out of halftime by sticking to their guns. Glad to see a team competent enough to stick to a controversial game plan by continuing to jump off sides every third down. Despite that, Indy did get a stop on fourth down, but the defense fucked that up too by getting a personal foul after the play was over for pelvis swirling in the ref's face. Yes, it's a weird rule, but one swirl does equate to three pumps. A pump is humorous and lustful. A swirl suggests love is involved, which you better be damn sure that love is going to be reciprocated by a referee until you insinuate you want to do it to him. That play, though, represents why the Colts lost. A major lack of focus and discipline in this game. Also, the Chiefs just played a lot better. And the Colts had received zero breaks in this game, so... That will get you too. Example, Indianapolis recovered a fumble on the first play of this Chiefs offensive series. Finally, they had the ball in the red zone to start an offensive drive and maybe could get something good. Never mind. D Ford goes on to strip Andrew Luck of the ball, recovered by the Chiefs' Justin Houston, and that really ended all hope for the Colts. So, on to the Chargers and Patriots, an equally disturbing game. If you add the age of Phillip Rivers to the age of Tom Brady, you get 78, the oldest combined quarterback playoff age. 
Brady plans on playing until he's 45. Rivers plans on stopping procreation when he's 78 or when he has his 78th kid, whichever comes first. And I can't even enjoy another goddamn Rivers has too many kids joke after that ass kicking. Chargers, Philip Rivers is like Jamie Lannister to me. I used to hate him, but given time and great loss, I find myself pulling for him. And today I asked Philip Lannister that we come together to defeat a greater evil in the Patriots. A Lannister always pays his debts, and a Rivers? Well, they always go into a debt so great that they have no chance of ever getting to the Super Bowl. I was very, very dumb to ever think the Chargers had a chance to win in New England in the playoffs. I missed all the obvious signs, like Phillip Rivers being 0-7 versus Tom Brady. Like the Pats' average margin of victory in the divisional round being something like 70 points. Like the fact that the refs would be totally cool with Donta Hightower plowing Rivers into the turf three seconds after the play got whistled dead. The NFL does a great job at protecting the quarterback until it actually fucking matters. If that were Brady, that defender would have been ejected and Roger Goodell would have personally ordered the IRS to turn said player's credit score into shit. That's how they get you. It was just too easy for the Patriots offense. Like, you know, like always. The first drive of the game lasted seven minutes and 11 seconds, or enough time for Phillip Rivers to make three babies, and was mostly Brady playing hot potato with James White. Tom Brady averaged a .6 air yards on the drive, which basically means that everything is clicking for them. After 14 plays, Sony Michelle scored from the one yard line and we basically figured out how this game was gonna be. In a shocking turn of events, however, the Chargers actually responded. Rivers picked up a third and 15 on a nice throw to Mike Williams, who was lucky to not end up like Alan Hearns and hung on to move the chain. This is the way Jim Nance described the near Mike Williams injury. Caught in a very awkward situation with his left leg. Mike Williams got caught in a very awkward situation with his leg, which makes it sound like he found DMs from his leg to his ex-girlfriend. What the fuck, leg? You been texting Kelsey again? I don't care how thick her thighs are. We don't need that kind of crazy in our life, Leg. This is an awkward situation you got us into, Leg. The Chargers scored their only first half points with a touchdown pass to Keenan Allen that was so wide open, I thought he played for the Patriots. Which unfortunately reminded the Patriots how they play football. Uh, yeah, hey Tom, uh, offensive adjustment here. Just go ahead and start throwing to Julian Edelman when the closest defender is 10 yards away. If He's not 10 yards open, check down to the next receiver who is eight yards open, and then to the next who will be seven yards open. If you don't see a guy who has a seven yard open cushion, just throw it to James White and we'll, we'll take the, the nine yard gain and live to fight another day. And instead of going into painstaking detail how the next four uh, drives were unanswered touchdowns for the Patriots, I'm going to just play yakety sacks over clips of Chargers defense thoroughly sucking because that's all the dignity they deserve right now. As NFL fans, it's like we're watching Old Yeller every January, hoping for a different ending. And it doesn't matter how many times we watch the movie. Every time the Patriots shoot that dog in the fucking face, and we're left feeling like we've had our hearts ripped out of our chest, and we put ourselves in that situation every goddamn playoffs. I mean, Robert Kraft is so used to winning in the postseason, he doesn't even watch the game. I don't need to watch. I know we got this. Uh, I really need to rethink some of my playlists in Spotify, though. I know he's my friend, but nobody should have this much Bon Jovi queued up. Jesus, Robbie, what am I thinking? For me, it was really hard to believe in Phillip Rivers in the postseason. There were so many signs saying this didn't make sense, that the Chargers were a sham, but like a Scientologist, I ignored every single piece of information that told me this was wrong, and I bought into the false god anyway. 
The first Chargers defensive stop was followed by a muff punt by Desmond King, one of the best special teams players in the NFL this season. I've never rooted for the Patriots to score more points, but I did today in hopes that they would get so exhausted from scoring on the Chargers that they make themselves sick and are incapable of doing anything offensively next week against the Chiefs. We've made more Philip Rivers has too many kids jokes here on That's Good Sports than on any other fake sports show on earth. But after CBS showed this clip of Philip Rivers' son tossing touchdown passes in a flag football game, Philip Rivers became the first NFL quarterback to have a 12-year-old son with a better throwing motion than him. River Sun might also have a faster 40 time. So now we get the Patriots traveling to Kansas City for the AFC Championship game. Remember that scene in Bird Box where Sandra Bullock is trying to decide which child has to take off the blindfold, which would in turn risk the life of one of the kids? As a Broncos fan, that's how I feel about the Chiefs versus Patriots AFC Championship game. Except I want both kids to take their fucking blindfolds off and die. That can't happen, so go Chiefs, I guess. Thanks for watching another episode of That's Good Sports. Please subscribe here on YouTube. Uh, give at WillKey6 a follow on Twitter for helping me burn through all these playoff videos. I'm on Twitter, Instagram, at Brandon Perna. And the NFC playoff reviews will be up tomorrow, Monday. You know, just so you, you remember to come back and watch.